All right, pile one, welcome to your reading all about what magical qualities do you possess? So this is gonna be a reading that may be seen as, you know, what talents, gifts, or abilities do you have? What do people notice about you that's seen as one of a kind, special, or magical, right? And you guys went ahead and chose a bottle that makes me think of like a gold elixir or like a skincare product. It's making me think of like a skincare product to be quite honest, like a serum because it has that little dropper in it, but it looks like it's gold. So I was really channeling for you all that glitters is not gold. So I feel like you are being seen as one of a kind, right? And when you think of the sun, which is yellow, right? This makes me think of your health. This makes me think of how people perceive you, your self-confidence, your ego. And then we got a lot of cards here for you, Pile One, talking about transformation. I feel like your most magical quality is how you're able to transform your physical body, your sense of self, and possibly your identity constantly. Like, I feel like you're constantly shifting. And I'm not really seeing this as... You know, you may have low periods, but it doesn't ever look low. It just looks like you're always transitioning to become better. You're always transitioning your level up game. And the biggest thing that I saw for you was your health. Your health is constantly changing. So whether this be, you know, you're constantly looking for new ways to improve your mental health, um, maybe you're wanting to make updates to your physical appearance. I was saying that your little image looked like a skincare dropper. So maybe you are looking into the best skincare. You're trying to improve your radiance, your health, your longevity. It, it makes me think you may even have a lot of six house placements too. Like I'm not going to lie. So I noticed with six house placements, I have a six house stelium. Um, this doesn't have to just be your health, but it's like a, a service to other house. It's a sign where you are really wanting to look into the details, like you're very tedious, they're hardworking. And again, it talks about your health and wellness. So I noticed that people that have especially Scorpio in the sixth house, they're really extreme with their ways of how they take care of themselves, how they take care of people. Um, how they're able to apply themselves in the work field. So regardless of this just being your physical beauty, I feel like you are just a really hard worker. You have an eye for detail and you're someone that could be seen as a little bit extreme. So you will literally get rid of everything and start over from scratch. And people may see that to be like, whoa, like you don't have to like get rid of all your products or you don't have to like start over from scratch on your project at work. But it's like you want perfection. And with those Virgo, as well as the Scorpio placements, because we have the sixth house that I was really channeling for you, plus the Pluto, which is Scorpio, this is like overachiever energy. This is someone that isn't afraid of having to try again over and over, having to, you know, fail, having to have like a death and rebirth moment. But it seems like every time people are like, oh, Pile one's gonna fuck this up because they had something that was, you know, good for them and they just completely got rid of it. You always are able to come out on top and you're always able to make something new out of a situation that, you know, looks dead or looks bad or... I, I feel like most people, for you, Pile one, most people would not be able to... Wow, I'm hearing clean up their act as well as you do. I don't know what that means, but I feel like your life is continuously changing. You have a really great way of adapting to your environments and you're almost like a shape shifter. I'm really seeing that for you. And for you, pile one, I'm not just seeing this as your health. Like yes, your health and your identity may be constantly kind of going through cycles, 
But I feel like it's also applying to the people that's around your life also. Because the 11th house makes me think of your goals, your aspirations for the future, but also people that you surround yourself with, your friend group. You are constantly catching people by surprise because, because of how much you're leveling up, how much you're changing, your environment has to kind of change along with that. And so I feel like you're constantly changing your mind about what you want your, maybe your future career to be. Maybe you're always aiming for the best possible scenario when it comes to your job, your living situation, maybe your spouse. If you guys are aiming to, you know, have a future with someone, you want to be able to find the right partner for you. So I will say, pile one, I will say that you may go through a lot of uh, social settings, group collaborations, friendship groups, and even partners, romantic partners in your life. You're constantly, you know, cycling through. And it sounds horrible the way that I'm saying this, but you have a very um, broad range of people to pick and choose from. Like, I feel like you're very picky when it comes to your friend groups, when it comes to your love language and how you express your love to your partners. And because of that, people may see that you may discard people easily or you're kind of cycling in and out of friendship groups a lot. Um, you're kind of being seen, pile one, as someone that is constantly changing their social setting environment, work locations, like you're, you're not really stuck in one place. You're constantly changing who you are, who you vibe with, and what you are known for. And this is a magical ability because not many people have this, the way that you deliver it. It's like, yes, people may go through changes and cycles, but it's the delivery of how you do it that seems really magical. Like most people would look at you and be like, Pile One never has a bad hair day. Pile One is never looking like a fool on social media or people are never saying anything bad about Pile One. So like your delivery of how you are transitioning and transforming, I don't really see a whole lot of like negative press about it or like bad gossip. It's more of just like, oh, where'd Pile One go? Like you kind of go in this little disappearing act, right? I do want to see what this card says because I didn't read it. And it says, the fairy godmother heralds the joyous news of a new baby. Ooh. Or the birth of a cherished idea. Protect and nurture your ideas as you would a baby. So I'm also going to say this too. You may be really in touch. I don't know why I'm channeling this for this card for you. I'm seeing that you may be really in touch with nature, children, and animals. I don't know what it is about you, Pile One, but you have a magical quality to you where babies may be really drawn to you, animals may want to like just come up to you. Um, I'm just seeing this as you being really in tune with nature, with Gaia, with God. There's something about how you may even have like a very mystical fairy-like quality. What's funny though is I was really feeling for you those six house placements, even though it's not being shown. This is a healing energy. Sixth house is a very healing, comforting energy. Um, so I feel like you have a very healing aura. And so you may actually, again, with that 11th house, you may be seen as someone that, again, like I was saying, you go through a lot of social settings and social groups a lot, but you attract very diverse people to you. And it's because of your energy, your aura, and the sense of light to you. It's kind of conflicting how we have this like very dark shedding of the old, and then it goes to the cycle of like a bright light. Um, I feel like you're really good at transmuting negative energy also. I would see this as you use your pain as your power. You use negativity and you let it feed into your ego so that you can become better. Um, I'm really seeing this as you are someone that just keeps pushing. You keep going. You're kind of a fighter in life, pile one. So some people may see this as you being bored or maybe not really appreciating what you have, which is why you're constantly changing. Or people may see this as you not being happy. But I actually see this as... You are someone that's constantly wanting to reinvent themselves because you want to heal and become the best version of you. So you're really good at being able to pinpoint things that people need to work on themselves, but I also feel like you're really critical of yourself. And the reason why you're constantly wanting to level up and change your surroundings and become better is because you may actually consciously think that 
wow, I don't know why I'm channeling this. This may not resonate for everyone, but I'm hearing that you may not think that you're good enough for most people. So there's a sense of an insecurity that I'm picking up for you, Pile One. I know that's not really a magical quality, but I really feel like people see you as someone that's really confident, really positive, really happy, really healing, and someone that's constantly wanting to level up. But I feel like internally, you may be someone that suffers from mental health. You may be someone that suffers with a little bit of sadness. Um, but the way that you show yourself to the world, it doesn't look like that. You always look like you're happy, you're radiant, you're glowing. But maybe, you know, you, you do have bad days. There's, there's days where you do struggle. But the way that you go about your life, people would never know that, right? People would never know the way that you may internalize your pain. And I really do sense that people may come to you for comfort. I'm really seeing that people may... People may even feel like tired around you. That's a really weird thing that I'm channeling. So people may feel so comfortable in your energy that people may actually start to doze off or feel sleepy. Um, again, with that sleeping baby, you may have actually had animals or babies just kind of like sleep next to you or just feel like really calm and peaceful around your energy. Um, I am really uh, feeling that for you, pile one. Let's go ahead and I want to roll my dice and I don't know if you guys can see this. I do have a little fairy, um, <laughs> it's like a jewelry holder, but I put fortune cookie notes in them. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some of those out and then I will start shuffling more cards to see what else is your magical qualities. So we have the eighth house, the moon and Pisces. This is all water energy. So Pisces is a water sign and then the eighth house and the moon um, are both, they're actually Scorpio and wait, hold on. Sorry, we have Scorpio, we have Cancer, and we have Pisces. So we have all three water signs right here for you. So again, you are sensitive, you're nurturing, you're sympathetic, and you're someone that is very healing. I just want to say that the way that you can emotionally connect with people, your magical quality is your heart. Your magical quality is your emotional softness. Your magical quality is being able, there's something really interesting that I'm picking up for you too with that Pisces. I don't know why I'm sensing this, but I'm getting kind of like this energy. You could be really intuitive. You could be really psychic, but also you're really in tune with other people and how they're feeling. So if you're not someone that identifies as being psychic, you're really good at picking up on people's emotions, picking up on people's feelings and being able to read people really well. Because when you think of Pisces, Pisces is someone that is very spiritual. They're very responsive. They're very caring. Like they can pick up on the energy of, um, of people's feelings. And, you know, there's not really anything that would pinpoint this is how someone's feeling, but you can sense it, right? And with the eighth house, this is all about being able to connect with someone intimately. Um, this is like Scorpio energy. So they're really good at reading people, seeing things between the lines and really trying to get to the nitty gritty of things. And then the moon, right, is your emotions, your needs, comfort, your sense of self, um, what you are not able to say or perceive publicly, right? We were getting the sun for you, but then we're also getting the moon here. So you're able to really pick up on what's going on underneath the surface of people's feelings, emotions, and actions. But I'm also seeing that you're really good at deep diving into yourself. So there's two different sides that I'm getting for you, Pile One. We were really getting that there's almost like a public mask that I don't think you purposefully wear, but people kind of just perceive you to maybe be perfect or maybe have a certain way about you. But then there's a lot of like depth and a lot of detail and a lot of underneath the surface with you that's like mushy, gushy, emotional, sensitive, and maybe someone that, you know, is really, really in tune to your feelings, to other people's feelings. But I want to say this too. Being uh, just from my own experience, I'm really intuitive and I, I don't really like labels, but I guess I'll just say I'm like a little bit psychic. I don't know. Um, but being able to tap into that, yes, it's a beautiful thing. 
but it can also be seen as a little bit of a burden because you start to pick up on other people's emotions and you start to feed off of that. And not everyone's emotions is positive all the time. Like sometimes you'll have psychic attacks, right? Like you'll, you'll have dreams where there's entities that are trying to attack you or you have negative spiritual experiences. So there's always the good with the bad. And I feel like you're someone that kind of has to learn how to protect yourself. But people see you as someone that is a really good listener, someone that you can go to for comfort. But I really am getting this sense of sadness from you, Pile One, because you have to put on this brave face. Like, I really see that. People don't really know the the darkness that maybe you've gone through, the struggles that maybe you go through mentally or emotionally. But I'm also sensing that... Um, you may try to, you know, escape from your own emotions and your own mind because it can be so overwhelming at times because I'm seeing so much of just, this is a lot, right? Your emotions can be extremely powerful. It may be unstable at times too, but you have a way of harnessing it. So the reason why you are constantly transforming is because you are feeling things before they happen. You get these intuitive nudges of like, it's time for you to go, or this no longer sits well with me anymore, or these people have bad intentions. So I'm hearing with great power comes great responsibility, right? From Spider-Man. So this is your superpower, right? Being able to know when it's time for you to level up, when it's time for you to let go of people, when it's time for you to transition and shape shift. Um, because you always kind of get on top, but people don't really know what's lying beneath the surface of this transition, of this change. It can be very scary. It can be very intense. It can be very powerful at the same time, but there's lessons that you have to learn throughout this glow up. I know I'm also getting for you that you may be really, really, why am I picking this up? You may be worried about who's there for you and who's not. There's this sense of energy that you pick up from people, but I'm also kind of getting paranoia with that Pisces energy. You may think that people are out to get you um, at times, which is maybe why you are wanting to constantly change your situation so that you can kind of get out of the negative energy. I'm just, I'm picking up for you, Pile One, that you may be getting psychically attacked right now. You may be feeling a lot of evil eye. There are a lot of jealous eyes on you right now, and I'm sensing that. And it's because of how you look so graceful going through life. I'm really picking that up. Your magical quality to you is your essence, your purity, and how you are able to walk through the bullshit and look like you have not been burned or look like you haven't been it looks like you haven't gone through anything. You just look like you're fine. You look like you're actually better than fine. Um, and I'm sensing that there's a lot of people that are jealous of you for that. So pile one, let me go ahead and uh, pull some tarot cards and some more cards for you and see what is the most magical qualities about you. I just keep hearing emotional. Like there's something about your emotions. Again, emotions can sway an audience, right? I just I feel like you're really able to tap into people's heart spaces. So we have courage for you. And it says, when picking roses, don't fear the thorns. So again, I was hearing emotions when it pulled courage. I feel like you're not afraid to be courageous when it comes to expressing yourself. Um, you're not afraid of being vulnerable. You're not afraid of being able to tell people, hey, this is how I'm feeling. Um, wow. Underneath that too, we also have beauty. So I will say there's something again, do you see what it says on the card? Dare to be tender and strongly vulnerable. So your vulnerability is very beautiful. You are being seen as someone that's really strong, really brave, and very courageous because I feel like a lot of people, they do wear masks in this world. It's really hard to be authentic in this world because people, you know, there's expectations that society has on you. Um, you know, you don't want to disappoint certain people or have people ostracize you, but you are constantly wanting to, again, daring to be different. You want to be seen as someone that's the most authentic self-expression of you. And so again, with Pluto, Pluto is a very daring energy. It's a very taboo planet. Um, this is a planet of secrets and mysteries and things that people don't really like to talk about or see. So your beauty, your sense of courage, your sense of emotional depth to you is seen as a little bit 
I'm not gonna lie. You may be seen as a little bit of a weirdo. In a good way though, pile one. You may be seen as someone that, you know, most people can't really... There's something about your beauty and something about your vulnerability that some people cannot accept. It's like they don't want to face it. They don't want to face the truth. There's something about you where you're so raw that a lot of people look up to this, but at the same time, there's people that also do not like this about you. So I, I really am getting, you have a lot of eyes on you. I don't know why I'm getting that so strong, but I am seeing this, sorry, I am seeing that your beauty is very magical. You may even have a very other real type of look. I'm seeing this as like elvish or fairy-like, like I'm seeing this as you may have like really long hands, fingers, you may be tall. Um, your face shape may be very like heart shaped. I'm seeing this as like a heart shaped face. Your ears may be a little bit pointy. Like just kind of think of like, um, yeah, even like a big, big eyes, like big round eyes, big almond eyes. Like I'm kind of seeing this as almost like childlike looking too. And don't take that weirdly pile one, but I'm seeing this as you may be looking a lot more youthful for your age as well, which is why maybe people may think that you never age. You must be like magical. There's something weird. Like you may tell people that you are a certain age and they're like, what? You don't look like you're 35 or blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's because of your emotional softness. There's something about your emotional softness that also co correlates with your physical appearance too, which is really interesting. So let's go ahead and pull some more cards and see what are your magical abilities, superpowers, gifts in this world. So we have the Queen of Swords. You are not afraid of being honest, truthful, and straight to the point with people. When you think of queens, right? Queens are all about nurturing, tending. So you have the ability of being able to be very stern, strict, and very strong with your words, but you also have a really great ability of being able to uplift and bring positivity to people with your words. Again, with great power comes great responsibility. You have the gift of voice. You have the gift of being able to articulate yourself in a way where people will listen to you. Um, I would see this as you may even be seen as someone that's really good at singing. You have a really wonderful singing voice. Maybe you're being seen as a public speaker or maybe even your creative writing, your ideas. There's something about journaling, writing, speaking, singing. I'm really seeing this as the throat. Or you are seen as someone that's really good at encouraging and, you know, sharing your your positive affirmations to people and making people feel seen, feel heard, and feel welcomed. You have this energy to you, pile of one. I'm really sensing a leadership quality to you. Uh, people feel drawn to you. I, I'm really getting with air, right? Air is seen as someone that can boost the the energy or they can kind of like dwindle it down like air think about air and fire air can make fire just explode or it can diminish it completely so you have the ability of being able to be seen as like an amplifier or being seen as an extinguisher so i don't know what that means for you but you have a way of escalating things but also de-escalating you can be seen as a really good mediator so you could be in if you guys want to do this, you guys could be seen as like a lawyer. You'd be really good at being able to like um, decipher the pros and cons of situations. You could be seen as a really good counselor, someone that could really be great at being able to see both sides and come to a really great compromise. Um, I'm seeing that your magical ability is your, how you are able to, yeah, I'm hearing coming to conclusions, your Wow, okay, so your ideas can be seen as really innovative too. Like you're really good at being able to come up with solutions that most people have not even thought of. So I would say protect your ideas. I don't know why I'm hearing that because even with the queen, the queens are all about nurturing and um, being able to tend to it, but it can also be seen as protection. So yes, you need to protect your ideas. There's certain ideas that you may get for creative ideas that you need to protect because again, people may try to steal your ideas. I'm also seeing this as you're just really good at being able to protect people's egos too. I don't know why I'm hearing that. Because of your words, like just the way that you communicate with others, it can be taken really well. But I'm also seeing that when people need to be spoken to in a way where they need to apply themselves, like again, 
Sixth house can be really critical. It's a really critical house. It's a Virgo, but it can also be seen as really helpful and really healing, right? It's a triggering, uh, triggering house, in my opinion. Um, so certain people may take you really well, and they may think that you're extremely helpful. But then some people, you know, if you have you have the ability and the power to really wound someone with your words as well. So again, this is kind of a warning, but it's a magical power of yours where you can convince the masses. You can get people to listen to you. You can get people to respect you for your ideas, your wisdom and your thoughts and your words, right? So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pull last couple cards before I end your video. Um, pile one with these index cards that I wrote words on and I just dropped a card. Okay, so we got toxic red flag and addiction. I want to pull another card just to clarify that just in case because <laughs> this is about your magical abilities and your magical powers and we also got perfectionists. So yeah, people are okay. So what people see as a magical power of yours is again, you are being seen as a perfectionist. I was saying this to you earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if you had Scorpio, Virgo, or six house placements heavy in your birth chart, or you're being seen as a Libra, Gemini, or an Aquarius sun is what I heard because of that Queen of Swords energy. You are being seen as someone that's constantly wanting to become better to the point where you may be really anal about it. But I'm really getting that you're, you're doing this, you're being seen as yourself, like you're constantly wanting to look the best, be the best, per, be perceived as the best. Um, some people may see this as being really toxic though, just because again, it's that obsessive energy, nitpicky energy, but I'm also going to say this too. People see you to be very addicting in your energy. And I want to see why that is with my dice. Cause I'm seeing that 12th house in the South node. It's easy to be around you. When you think of the South node, this is like, you're not fighting for it. This feels easy to be in your company. This is making me think that you are being seen as someone, um, you know, you feel safe, right? This is making me think of what comes easy to you. People can kind of just gravitate towards you. You don't have to like fight for this, right? This doesn't feel uncomfortable. This is like people are kind of just naturally gravitated to you. And when you see the 12th house, the 12th house is making me think of, you know, the subconscious. This makes me think of, um, you know, what people, maybe people are inspired by you or they aspire to be you, but there's this sense of energy that I'm getting with the 12th house where you can't see it, but you can feel it. Um, yeah, it's like psychic. It's like psychically you feel really connected to them. Um, so I feel like people may feel like your energy, right? Your, your energy, your presence, your aura is really easy to be around. It can be seen as a little bit addicting because even the 12th house can talk about addictions as well and a little bit of delusional energy like la la. So it doesn't feel real. So your energy can come off to people as almost like, yeah, I'm getting youthful again. I don't know why I'm getting that. So like youthful, maybe fairy tale like, maybe magical. Again, you are just magical in your energy. The 12th house is all about magic and spirituality, all that stuff. So just your energy in general, it comes easy to you. People get addicted to your energy. People feel like your energy is magic in itself. Um, and it's something that you don't have to work hard for. It's something that kind of just is naturally you. And with the South Node, that's a past life gift. Your past life gift is being able to make people feel connected to you and they can't explain it. People feel drawn to you. People feel like they can kind of just, you know, <laughs> open up to you and they don't know why. Let's get another little message again. Yeah, Sagittarius, this is making me think of spiritual beliefs too. You have this really interesting way of being able to kind of tap into this unknown realm. Um, again, I really am getting that you guys could be really strongly psychic or strongly intuitive, but I'm seeing this as people see you as being really happy. Again, this is like go with the flow free-spirited, bubbly, happy, just uplifting energy. Your energy is really uplifting. Your energy is very, can be really fun too, but really honest. Again, people feel just drawn to you for your bluntness, your honesty, your adventure, your excitement for life. And also because your energy has like this fairy tale like energy feel to it. It doesn't feel real. But pile one, 
I think that is all that I have for you. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Kyle 2, welcome to your guys' pick a card reading about what makes you magical. So this could be seen as a reading about your best qualities, your special talents, skills, or gifts, or even just what people perceive to be magical about you. And I'm gonna say this about your reading pile too. I don't know if you guys are going to be having a lot of astro astrological transits favor you at this time or very soon or maybe just in general, but I'm seeing a lucky break coming into your life because when you see the Jupiter return, this only happens like every 12 years or so where the planets, um, especially Jupiter, will transition into the sign of when it was when you were born. And this is usually a lucky time in your life when this happens. So I feel like you may be coming across your Jupiter return really soon. And I'm seeing that this is a 12 year cycle, right? So anything that you've been working hard on, anything that you may have been struggling with, anything that has been hidden from you, is going to be seen as a lot easier or it's going to be seen as blessed in this next cycle of yours. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys could be 49 years old, that could be when this is about to happen for you, or this could be seen as a time frame. So this could be around April 9th or this could be September 4th. So this could be a really lucky time in your life. But what people are seeing as magical, I really am getting that you have been hidden from society in some sort of way, pile two. Um, I don't think you, I don't know why I'm getting this. I don't want to be rude or anything, but I feel like maybe people have slept on you um, when it comes to your potential, when it comes to even just being noticed. I'm kind of getting wallflower energy for you, but I'm seeing a shakeup for that. There's going to be a change in how people, per, people perceive you really, really soon, or it's already starting to happen. And I'm seeing that it's because it's time for you, wow, it's time for you to show up is what I just heard. It's time for you to be blessed. And I want to read what this card says because I haven't read it yet. It says, hidden depths. It says, something is hidden is about to come to light. Perhaps a secret or a memory at the back of your mind. When we expose what's hidden, we can become free. So I feel like what people are going to be seeing as magical is you. I feel like you have been almost in this period of your life of slumber. It's making me think of either someone being like a, in like remission or it's making me think of when during the winter seasons, the animals tend to, you know, hide away and they have storage of food and they're usually sleeping until the spring comes and they're able to awaken and be out in nature again. So I feel like this has been a time in your life where there hasn't been a whole lot going on. Like, I really feel like maybe you feel like you've been in this part of your life of resistance. It feels like it's been really quiet. There hasn't been a whole lot happening. But what's going to be magical is this new door that's going to be opening up in your life. I'm seeing this as an opportunity for something. Like I'm seeing this as an opportunity to change your life around. So you may be given an opportunity that's seen as really blessed and lucky and that's why people are going to be seeing you as magical because this opportunity may not be something that comes to most people or this could just be an opportunity for you to change. Like I'm hearing a changing a living situation. Like I feel like it's your capabilities to make something happen for yourself, pal, too. That's what I'm seeing as being different. And it's something that has been hidden from you. It could have been secret from you. I'm seeing this as this has been something that you've been working hard for or you're going to be receiving something and people are going to be like, how did you do that? <laughs> That's what I'm really hearing for you. So let's use my dice to see what are you about to receive or what is about to open up for you? Let's kind of get some ideas here. We got Libra, we got the moon, and we got the ninth house. So I'm seeing, wow, I'm hearing a purpose. You're about to receive some sort of purpose in your life. I'm seeing the moon as this is a need, right? This is an emotional need. This could be even be seen as a dream. The ninth house is finding purpose on your life, having a deeper meaning to life. Um, this can talk about life experience, but also it's making me think of like your spiritual beliefs as well. And then with Libra, this is all about balance and peace, love, beauty, art, relationships. Um, yeah, this is very like 
very pretty, loving, just peaceful energy. So I feel like what's going to be happening is you're going to be finding a peace of mind, right? You're going to be finding maybe a purpose in your life. There's some sort of purpose to something. Maybe this is a purpose to some sort of karmic situation that you're, that you're going through because I see Libra as karma sometimes. Um, you may have been struggling emotionally. I'm really getting that for you. But what people are going to be seeing as magical for you, pile two, is some sort of lucky break or you're going to be gaining wisdom or insight on something that was really difficult for you. And I'm seeing this as justice. I'm seeing this as you being able to have a balanced outcome, being able to feel good about your situation. And for most of you, I feel like it's about your purpose, how you feel when it comes to your life story. Um, people may be seeing you yeah, I'm seeing a Libra moon as someone, wow, okay, so people see you to be, with that Libra, I, I, I'm a Libra too, but when I see Libra moon, I'm not gonna lie, I see this as people-pleasing energy, um, people that just want peace, people that just want harmony, but people that are also, you know, they, they crave that, they crave peace in their life, and with the ninth house, this is making me think that, this is making me think of their... They want peace, not just peace for themselves, but they believe peace in general is what needs to happen for the world. Like, I'm kind of seeing this as they're always looking into the future of how can they be the most peaceful? How can they have the most balanced outcome of their life? And if you have these placements, I don't know if this resonates, but let me know down below if it does. You have this hiddenness of wanting the best for people. You have a, a deepness of wanting the best for you, wanting the best for your loved ones. Like there's, there's a sense of anxiety that comes with that too, is you want things to be seen as perfect. You want things to be seen as balanced. You want things to be seen as good internally, right? And you may struggle with trying to people please, or maybe struggling to make sure that your loved ones, your surroundings and your environments are perfectly at peace at all times. And I'm seeing that this could be something that you guys have struggled with, right? It may have actually been very chaotic for you lately and your internal need of this, like, I need beauty, I need peace in my life, I need peace of mind. It hasn't been matching up with your reality. But what I'm seeing that is going to be seen as a beautiful trait about you or this magical quality to you, Pile 2, is you're going to be making a change. I, I just, there's something about a change to your living situation that I'm really getting for you. I'm not really seeing cards indicating that, but there's a peaceful resolution to a living environment that you are struggling with. And if it's not a living environment, I'm just seeing that this is a place that you are constantly at. So this could be seen as like your job. Um, this could be seen as somewhere that you're constantly going but I'm feeling like internal conflict. There's something that you've been dealing or struggling with that has been internally conflicting with you that you're going to be getting a peaceful outcome towards. And I'm seeing that this is magical because I feel like this is going to be transformed overnight in a way. Um, it's something that's going to be looking extremely blessed and people are going to be wondering how you were able to like almost make over. Yeah, I'm hearing make over something, make over or transform or beautify a situation in your life. So anyway, pile two, let's go ahead and pull some more cards and see. Okay, this card wants to come out. We got discover. Let's go ahead and see <clears throat> what magical quality you have that people see as good. Whoops, sorry, I moved my phone. All right, sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit today, so I had to get some water, but we have discover and we have rest. So what people are going to be seeing, again, as magical about you, I'm going to zoom into this, what people are seeing as magical about you is I feel like you're going to be discovering either something new about you, new about your life. Again, discovering your purpose, I was really seeing that for you. There's a purpose to either something that's going wrong in your life or you're going to be discovering a deeper meaning to something that people are going to be seeing this as very beautiful. I keep hearing beautiful or insightful or just magical. Um, I really want to see, because it's going to be so different for everyone, but what are you discovering? What are, what are you discovering? 
your identity. The first house is all about you. So you're discovering a deeper meaning behind your life philosophies, possibly your individuality, your identity, or even how you look, right? There's something about how you are discovering the purpose of you, yourself. Um, and this may be something that's very foreign to you because again, I was really channeling wallflower energy or someone that wants to be seen as diplomatic, someone that's being seen as, you know, everyone enjoys your company. And you may be wanting to change that about yourselves. There's something about how, there again, I keep channeling internal conflict of trying to control the narrative or trying to control the the environment that you're in, making sure that everything's calm and peaceful and just energetically warm. And I don't know what you're going to be doing, but maybe you're going to be taking a break on that. I'm also seeing that what people are going to be seeing as magical is I feel like there's a point of you're going to be wanting to take a break on something. There, I don't know what this is because I, I feel like whatever this is that you are wanting to change it's going to be a little bit shocking to people because I feel like this is something that people may have just expected you to do for the rest of your life or they just saw you as being this person. But this is going to be a cycle in your life pile too where I'm seeing that people are going to be seeing you as magical because it's almost like you're awakening something in you. You're awakening to a calling or awakening to a purpose or awakening to who you truly are. And because you're awakening something in you, again, being in that slumber, you've been in this period of rest and you're ready to kind of come out now, it's going to be shocking people. There's a lot of things talking about the hidden rest. I was really channeling like a bear being in um, hibernation and during the springtime, you're going to awaken. I want to see, I mean, yes, you're going to be finding your identity, but what exactly is this that you're awakening? Because you are awakening something within you. What is that? And something about this is going to be seen as really beautiful and magical. Wow. Okay, so we got a lot of cards, but the first one on top that I saw was abandoning and walking away. There is a lot of things here. So I wasn't going to take all these, but you know what? I think I will. Abandoning, walking away power struggle, chance encounter, vulnerable, talented, third party. <laughs> that's a lot. Okay, that's that's a lot. So there's this like conclusion that you're coming to. I don't know why I want to say that. There is this conclusion, breakthrough, or some sort of insight that you're going to be discovering about yourself in some sort of situation that you've been struggling with that's going to be helping you come to some sort of conclusion so that you can walk away from it, either emotionally or physically. You are moving away from an old persona. You're moving away from something that maybe you don't really believe in anymore. And this has been something that has been really hard for you because it's been taking your power away. I was really channeling that you've been trying to like make peace or be peaceful or try to like, you know, make sure that everyone else is doing okay or you've been in a situation where it's very conflicting for you. I feel like what you're going to be doing is there's going to be some sort of opportunity for you to finally be vulnerable with yourself and be like, this is not working. Or you're going to be like coming to a point in your life where I want something more, right? And I'm seeing that there's something that you are working hard at or there's going to be an opportunity to try something else that you're going to become extremely well known for or be really good at. And I, I don't know why I'm seeing this as talented because like with talented, this is something that you work towards. This isn't like a gift. This isn't given to you. This is something that you put time, work and energy into. And it's going to become very, I don't know why I want to keep seeing, say very well known, but something about something that you're already doing that you're improving on, that you're working on is going to be seen as like mastered or mastery or successful. And I actually feel like because of this, it's going to be actually helping you take a chance on yourself. What is this talking about? Because this could be seen as so many different things. 12th house in Pisces, actually, sorry, 12th house in Neptune, which again is Pisces, but wow, the <laughs> Neptune is the imagination. This is what you're inspired by, your inspiration in the arts. So I actually feel like this could be seen as your psychic ability. 
This could be seen as a creative art form, but this is something that's hidden about you. You have a hidden gift in the arts, in music, in beauty, or even just in your own intuition. Your intuition is going to be fine. There's something about your intuition or some sort of creative artistic ability that you have that's going to be fine-tuned. And I'm seeing this as being able to be really, really successful. You can use this to your advantage. And I'm telling you, there's something about how you're going to be benefiting from something. You're going to be getting, like, reaping the hard work that you have been sowing. You're finally going to be in this period of blessed. Um, I'm seeing this as, like, past deeds kind of coming back now. It's like rewards for your hard work. I also want to say another thing. I'm getting a third party situation. So this could be a third party at your job, at work. Um, this could be a situationship that you are involved in. What's going to be seen as magical is I'm seeing that you're going to be able to get out of something. You're going to be getting out of, I'm hearing a contract for some of you guys. Um, I'm seeing this as you being taken for granted or people trying to take your money from you or your resources or someone maybe treating you like a third wheel, right? There's something about how you've been made to feel not as important, like you're the side piece or people are taking your information, people are taking your generosity, people are taking something from you or making you feel like you're not valued, right? And that's going to be resolved. And I want to see how. I want to see how that's going to be resolved. Because I, I feel like you're going to be claiming your power back. That's the biggest thing that I'm seeing here. We got the Wheel of Fortune for you guys, pile two. You are taking your own life into your hands. When you see that wheel, again, this is a the 10, right? This is an ending and a new beginning, a new cycle. Things are finally starting to turn in your favor. But I feel like it's because of you. You're claiming your power in a way and you're wanting to take direction on your life. You're not really wanting anyone or anything to be controlling the narrative of your story, you know, holding the, the steering wheel. You are finally in control of your life. I, I feel like you are setting some firm boundaries is what I'm hearing. You're putting some boundaries, putting your foot down. This is a sense of you wanting to step into your power and step into the hot seat is what I heard. Um, we have the seven of wands in reverse. So that's really interesting because usually that talks about, you know, having to fend for yourself and being on guard. Wow. Okay. So I'm actually getting for you you are done with trying to keep the peace. You're done with trying to fix things for other people. I'm really channeling this for you. The Seven of Wands makes me think of having to defend yourself or other people or have to be on guard. There's this loosey goosiness to you. <laughs> Look at the hangman. He's just like, he's just stretching his back out. Like, he looks a lot more relaxed, right? He doesn't feel like he has to be on guard. And I'm getting it's because you're ready to move on from something. You are already in the process of kind of like in this mode of revision. You're getting a new perspective on something. I think you're wanting to release control on things that you don't really feel like you have control over or you don't want to feel like you need to be in control of this. Like there's certain things that you're stressed out about that I don't want to be rude, that you don't need to be stressed out about it, uh, pile two. And people are going to be seeing you as magical because I'm getting this sense of release. I'm getting this sense of just, oh, like, I feel, I'm not going to lie. People may have seen you as really uptight and you're going to be changing that about yourself. You're going to be ending that. You're not going to be so hard or critical or trying to, like, fix everything. I'm really getting that from you. Um, I feel like what's going to be seen as magical or just powerful about you in general, pal, too, is you're finally choosing yourself enough to walk away and start over on something or taking control of your life. Um, being able to, yeah, get out of this Eight of Swords mindset, feeling like you are trapped in life. You are going to be getting out of a situation that makes you feel trapped, makes you feel you're, like you're not seen or not heard, not appreciated, and you are starting new right? You're starting new for yourself. Let's see how that you were starting new. Let's see. Let's get some more details here. We got the past and then we also got trust the process. So your spirit guides are telling you to trust the process and that the past is going to be remaining in the past. And also I'm hearing that the past, wow, conflict, 
in eighth house. Yeah, I'm telling you, you've been having a lot of conflict about your past or conflict about your situation right now. Um, again, that eighth house is all about secrets. There's something that you don't know that's going to be the compromise here. I, I feel like there's going to be a reveal to you, pile two. What's going to be seen as magical or powerful for you is you're going to be having this sense and this ability to kind of just emotionally walk away really easily because there's going to be this conclusion, there's going to be a reveal, there's going to be this epiphany moment. Um, something's going to be revealed to you that maybe you didn't you didn't really have any insight about. Like again, you you're kind of coming to this like realization about something that's helping you change your life and helping you walk away. And I really want to get some more insight on what this is. We got influence, impulsiveness. So we got Mercury and Libra. Again, we got more Libra energy in the seventh house as well as Mars and Aries in the first house. I feel like you're going to be, wow, selfish. I'm hearing selfish. So I think you're going to be hearing something about how maybe someone was being selfish towards you. Maybe you're being shown to be a little bit more selfish, but whatever this insight or epiphany moment is, is telling you to be devoted to yourself. It's telling you to take a risk on yourself. And I'm also hearing that if you've been dealing with people that have been, you know, acting like they don't care, you're going to be proven to you that you need to either move on or you need to focus on your own. Um, there's something about selfishness that keeps coming up. I don't know how that's going to be relating to everyone here, but I'm hearing selfishness. So either this is you being selfish or you're going to be discovering that someone else is being selfish, um, which is going to be helping you choose a new direction for yourself. What is going to be seen as magical about pile two? What's being seen as magical about pile two? Six of Swords. What's being seen as magical is your ability to move on, to make peace, right? For you to be able to bring closure to your life. So I know this isn't really being seen as your traits that are being seen as magical, but again, we have Ten of Cups here. So I really feel like you're going to be having some emotional um, happiness, right? You're going to be having emotional stability, a brand new beginning. You're going to be feeling this sense of belonging. Underneath that was the Ace of Cups too. I, I really feel like you're having a new emotional beginning, your your sense of magic is coming from your ability to bring closure into your life so that you can per find the pursuit of your happiness. And this is an emotional need that you've been wanting. So this could be seen as, you know, finding your partner and settling down, having kids, because there's kids and a partner there in that photo. Um, you could be walking away from a really really painful relationship, a relationship that made you feel like crap, right? You could be walking away from a third party situation where you didn't really know where you stood and then you meet the the life partner of your dreams, right? Because we got a chance encounter earlier for you. You could be like meeting your soulmate after leaving this toxic relationship or you could be like leaving a toxic work environment and then stumbling into the the work life of your dreams. Like I'm seeing this as a very like dream like perfect situation for yourself, but it's when you sacrifice something else or walk away from something else or if it's not a thing that you're walking away from, it's like a persona or your sense of judgment or your sense of self that you're making peace with so that you can find your happily ever after, right? But you are emotionally moving on from something. So whether this be you, you the past, an old identity or a person or a place, that's what you're doing. But in return, you're going to be getting some sort of gift of what you actually need and what you actually desire. But pile two, that is all that I have for you. I really hope that this was helpful and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Pile three. So welcome to your pick a card reading all about your most magical qualities. So the two cards that are already on the table for you is a card that says temptation and then you have Taurus I have. So pile three. I was really hearing indulgence. I was really getting the feeling of the richness of life. People see you, yes, as a temptation, but I feel like your most magical qualities is you are always getting tempted into, you know, being able to lavish yourself, enjoying the moment, enjoying good food, good wine, good people. Like, you have a way of being able to make things feel just energetically 
really nice. Um, what do I mean by that? So when I think of Taurus placements, just in general, they have an eye for beauty just because they are ruled by Venus. But Tauruses also have a very chill, calm, just very peaceful energy to them. But they're also, they're being seen also as someone that is really, really, again, they indulge in the things that they like, the things that they value, beauty, aesthetics, good food, good wine, and also they may be really drawn to beautiful places and things. So you are being seen as someone that has an eye for beauty. You may be seen as someone that's very sultry, very seductive. Um, I'm really getting your physical appearance is really just on point. The way that you take care of yourself, like you smell nice, you look nice, you know, <laughs> your energy is nice. Um, so people, you have a lot of people that are very tempted by you, um, sexually. I am getting that. So people are very attracted to you. People may see you as very beautiful, very handsome. I was hearing very fine in my head. Um, you take really good job at making yourself look good. But I'm also just seeing in general, you have this magical quality about you of because you are able to just really dive deep into the things that you enjoy, being able to really live in the moment, um, it's giving off very carefree and very just warm, just really warm and engaging energy. Most people are not able to let loose and just enjoy the moment and enjoy their surroundings. Like I was really getting this image in my mind for some reason of someone being able to be so okay with themselves that they're, you know, singing in the grocery store or dancing around like they just they are they don't care about who is going to be judging them like they're so authentic with their body their self-expression and their vibe they don't look like someone that's insecure or self-confidence or really rigid or just stern they look like someone that's like the life of the party someone that's really fun someone that's really happy someone that's just you know comfortable with themselves and i'm kind of getting some leo energy here too i'm not gonna lie pile three so you guys may have some Taurus or Leo placements, I'm channeling that, but I'm really seeing that you are not afraid of, you know, being tempted by your desires. You're not afraid of pursuing the things that you like, the people that you like. People see this as magical because most people are afraid of being able to go after the things that they enjoy or being feeling comfor comfortable enough to be who they are. Um... Yeah, I'm hearing something about your voice too, because even with Taurus, this is the second house, this can talk about your voice, this can talk about your value, you may have a really soothing voice, you may be really good at singing, there's something about your voice, like the tone of your voice, or even just the, yeah, I don't know what this is, maybe it's the way that you speak, it's like your speech in general. You have like this really strong energy, but it's very sultry at the same time. It's almost coming off as a little bit soft and feminine too. So even if you are a masculine, you're coming off as someone that's really soft and really just recepted well, right? You're really well received is what I keep hearing in my mind. And you may be very visually pleasing to the eye. So it may not be like I'm not really getting like sexy or seductive like Mars placements or Scorpio or Aries placements, but it's more of like beauty and refined and high quality, very just like aesthetically pleasing. You're aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, you take really good care of your health and your appearance and your grooming. Um, maybe the things that you're interested in, like even, yeah, I'm really getting like almost angelic soft vibes from you like I don't know why I'm getting this but it's like angel I'm getting like angel energy like you have a very soft appearance you may have like a I don't know like soft features maybe there's something about how you're really graceful it's the way that you move about it's really calm really peaceful really sultry yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm really getting for you. It's like just this really peaceful, calm, sultry energy to you, Pile 3. And people really like this because, again, not a whole lot of people can be the way that you move your body or the way that you move in general. And most people are not like that. And it's making me think of Marilyn Monroe. She was a Taurus sun and a Leo rising, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's kind of giving me that 
the way that she walked, the way that she talked, it was very just, it seemed like she planned it out, but it was just her own. People were very drawn to her. She was very eye-catching. She was very pleasing to the eye. Um, there's something about you where it's like this once-in-a-lifetime kind of beauty to you. Regardless if you're a man or a woman, there's a sense to you where you're just very beautiful. Um, your facial features and your body seems very balanced too. I'm getting a lot of stuff about how you look. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep going on about that, but the way that you look, I keep hearing you look very angelic. There's something about your energy or the way that you are being perceived that's very angelic. And I keep seeing images of like musical instruments too. So like you may be someone that's very musically inclined. You may be really good at playing a musical instrument or maybe you're a singer because I'm really getting that. And now I'm getting Haley Williams from Paramore in my head. She was also a Taurus son and her, she, man, she can just belt out a tune. Her voice was something else. Um, powerful, right? Boasting almost. I'm really getting that's the energy that I'm really getting from you. So people see you to be very like angelic looking, very beautiful, very sultry, but you have a voice on you. You have like this power that's within you, right? Um, most people are not able to really compose themselves as well as you do. And another thing that I want to say about you, I'm telling you, your self-care game is on point. This was on the bottom of this deck, so I grabbed it. Your self-care game is on point pile three. The way that you take care of your physical needs, your physical body, the way that you comfort yourself is just chef's kiss. Like, it doesn't even have to be how you prepare yourself. It's like you are not, like, holding yourself back from having a good time. And maybe a good time for you is being able to, like, make all your favorite yummy foods and lounge around, investing in your self-care, just having, like, a spa day for you. Like, you don't hold back when it comes to the luxuries and the things that you enjoy. You don't hold back in life. Um, you may be seen as someone that lives a very lavish, abundant, or very comfortable lifestyle. I'm really getting that for you, regardless of what you do for income or what your life is like. I'm just seeing that you live very comfortably or you try to make your life be very comfortable. Um, and even like I'm getting like your aesthetic for your home as well. That could be something that you're really into is making sure that your home feels cozy and comfortable. And I'm even getting like images in my mind of someone like making a lot of organic home cooked meals. Um, like just a really cozy, comforting, warm environment. Like you want your surroundings to be beautiful and pretty and comfortable comfortable and you also want to have that same energy to yourself as well so people see you again to be well groomed I, I want to keep saying that but you also live a very peaceful and beautiful life like I'm really sensing that people may be jealous of your lifestyle I'm really sensing that for you so let's go ahead and see what exactly are people um viewing you as magical. How are they viewing you as magical? And I'm dropping my tarot cards on the floor. Okay, so we got the King of Cups for you. Let's pull some more cards. Why are people viewing pile three as magical? What is magical? We also have the King, oh sorry, the Knight of Cups in reverse. That's really interesting. So the King of Cups makes me think of power and control and being responsible with your emotions. And then underneath, underneath the deck, we have the Seven of Wands, but then we have the Nine of Cups in reverse, which makes me think of, you know, someone's coming towards you to extend an emotional offer. So people are seeing you as magical because I feel like you may get a lot of love offers. I don't know why I'm seeing this. Like, I'm telling you, because of how you are, and this is also making me think of very peaceful and graceful energy, there's this really soft yet powerful energy about you. Um, people are very emotionally drawn to you. You may have a lot of people that may want to, like, you know, they may swoon over you. They may try to, like, bribe you with gifts and time, love offers, energy. I'm really seeing that. I'm, I'm hearing that you may attract a lot of players, but you're not easily swayed by, you know, people's advances because you value quality. Because of that Taurus energy that I'm getting from you, Pile 3, regardless if you're a Taurus or not, you value quality, but you tend to attract a lot of people that want, they just want things from you. They want to claim you. They want to be possessive over you, but you want the real deal, right? You are a king or a queen, regardless of your gender. You're being seen as 
someone of emotional intelligence, someone that's emotionally mature, someone that's also not just going to be giving their heart out to everyone. I'm seeing this as value. You have a value, value to you, but you tend to attract people that may be lesser than you or people that just want to take from you. But you're really good at being able to decipher like, okay, this person values me for me this person's not a good fit for me this person just wants to hit it and quit it regardless if this is love or just friend or business I feel like you are you're someone that attracts a lot of people and opportunities to you but you're only going to be accepting the ones that actually have um that match your value that match your moral code that match your emotional um mindset I don't know why I want to say that and so People are seeing you as magical because they think that you're just given opportunities and things very easily. But I think they, they need to realize that when you have boundaries, when you are when you are in your power and when you start to share this light and you're not in this chaser mindset, you will actually gravitate what is a vibrational match to you, but you're also going to be gravitating uh, people that want to feed off your energy. And what I mean by that is I feel like you attract a lot of negative um, vampire-like energies where people try to feed off of you, take advantage of you, but you're strong enough to not let that happen. So people may see this as magical because you're able to attract people, places, and things, but there's also a downside to it too, Pile 3, because I'm kind of questioning, I'm hearing this question that you're having in my mind of you questioning people of if they actually like you for you or they just like you for your things or they just like you for your value in society. Like I'm kind of getting that people put you on a pedestal almost or they see the things that you have in your life or the status that you have or the money that you have or something like that or even just your beauty. They may see you as like a, a pretty face, right? And so they may want to take things from you or only want to be with you because of those things. And so you have to have a really strong level of discernment of making sure that these people value you for who you are and not because of the things that you bring to the table or not because of, you know, the material stuff or because you're just a pretty face, right? And so... I, I'm kind of getting that you wish that you could tell people like, yeah, I may attract these people to me, but not everyone is going to be good, right? There's plenty of fish in the sea, but not everyone's going to be, <laughs> not everyone's going to be like the, the prime fish. They may be some sharks that may just want to like take things and eat you and hurt you, right? So I'm kind of sensing that people may just see the, you know, the positives, but they don't actually see the negatives also. Um, yeah, but I'm hearing that you have to have really strong boundaries. So what's being seen as magical is you do have strong boundaries. You value quality over quantity. But I'm also seeing that you attract a lot of people that may just want to, you know, be selfish and take things from you. What other people are saying that they think is magical about you is, again, you have this light to you, you have this, like, youthfulness, this energeticness, and there's this, like, emotional warmth that I'm really getting from you, Pile 3. Like, you make people feel good in your energy. Um, again, with that Four of Pentacles, people are really possessive of your heart because the sun makes me think of the heart. This makes me think of Leo energy. But also, people... Wow, okay... You're really giving with your energy too. So what I'm really hearing for you is the people that you do choose to allow in your life. Because I am seeing this as you're being really picky with people in your life and who's in your energetic space. But the people that you do allow to be in your energy, you're really emotionally giving. Um, you're really giving with your time, your energy, and possibly even your money. Um, there's something about how you enjoy the best of the best, but you also want to make sure that the people that you love and care about also are benefiting from that as well. And so you're also very giving. You're a really good host or a hostess. You're someone that wants to splurge on your loved ones. You're also someone that may just be really open with your energy around the people that you love and care about. There's something re really healing about you as well. But I am also seeing too 
that there's people that are also very possessive of your time, your energy, and possibly the things that you make materially. So that is something that you need to be careful about because, and I feel like you are, but people see this as people are obsessed with you, people are wanting what you want. Um, I am hearing that you may have some fake friends. I don't know why I'm, I'm channeling this for you so much, Pile 3, but... You really need to make sure that the people that are in your life are quality, like you. You have, you're very, there's something one of a kind about you and you're just a good person and you attract good and bad people to you and you're really generous with the things that you have and you need to be careful of that. I am dropping cards left and right. Yeah, so another thing that people see about you that they see as magical, again, is this emphasis on your heart this emphasis on being able to attract new people, new places, and new opportunities into your life. But I don't think, again, they realize the hard work, like how much responsibility it takes to be able to have all of this attention on you or have all of these things. Like, I don't know why I'm getting this so much, but I'm seeing this as you possibly being like a performer. You could be in, you know, the public eye. And most people that haven't experienced that would see this as a blessing, but there's also some downsides to that as well, right? Um, nothing is your own. Nothing's personal to you. You're constantly having to have this responsibility on your shoulders. And again, there is another bull here. So a lot of emphasis on Taurus energy. Um, I want to see what the Ace of Cups is really quick with my dice. Yeah, Mercury in the 12th house. I'm just really getting that people feel very connected to you. You are able to draw an audience to you is what I am hearing in my mind. But also with the 12th house, this is like what's hidden, like what's beneath the surface. Um, you don't give your heart out very easily to people is what I'm hearing. I also want to say that with the Ace of Cups, with the Mercury in the 12th house, you're really good at being able to perceive when people are you know, needing some emotional help or if they're needing comfort, you're really good at perceiving when people are struggling. I don't know why I'm channeling that. I know that's a weird message to say about what makes you magical, but you have a way of being able to find the people that are hurting, that are needing help and that are needing a sense of reassurance. And you're being seen as almost like their protector or their, wow, this is really, this is really extreme. Their protector, their savior, their, their their boost of motivation. So it's almost like you can sense when people are sad. You can pick up when people are struggling. And you are, I feel like you're, you tend to be drawn to those types of people. You tend to draw in people that are hurting, but you also are drawn to those people as well. And there's this need in you of wanting to help take care of them. And people see this as like really magical because of how compassionate you are. Um, I am seeing this as you are very humble and very giving and very generous. I am really getting that energy from you. You're really generous with your money, your time, and your energy. Um, but there is a message here that I want to keep repeating that you need to make sure that you're giving it to the people that respect you, people that really, you know, appreciate you. Because I feel like maybe in the past you had a, a tendency to give it to people that didn't really deserve it or people that would take advantage of your kindness. And I'm seeing that what's magical about you is your heart and your generosity and your, your sense of being able to want to help people. I am seeing that for you, Pile 3. So I'm going to pull some more cards before I end this video for you, Pile 3, of what makes you magical. What makes Pile 3 magical? Again, with these cards, man. So we got Stalker. So I'm telling you, what makes you magical is people are just obsessed with you. Um, again, people, you may have a Stalker. I don't want to freak you out, but you, you have people. Okay, that's weird. You have people that want your attention, your time, and your energy. You are constantly possibly being thought about. People can't like forget you. People are constantly like wanting to hit you up and be in your personal space. The wish is granted. You are being seen as magical because you're going to be getting a wish or possibly there was a wish that was granted for you. Yeah, whatever this wish is is noticeable is what I'm hearing or it's about to be noticeable. I want to see what it is that you're about to receive as a wish. Um, but there's a wish that's going to be granted, which is what's making you be seen as magical. I'm seeing that for you. 
So we have harmony here. So the sun in Libra in the seventh house. So you may be getting a wish with a compromise, some sort of balanced union. Because when you think of Libra in the seventh house, this is a relationship. This is a contract. This is some sort of permanency. And I'm seeing this again, the sun. There's, there's something about a peace of mind, living a life of beauty, luxury, and harmony, right? Think about harmony. Um, so you could have a really harmonious love life. You could have a very harmonious um, family life. There's something about your home life that could be seen as very harmonious. But I'm seeing this as beauty. I'm seeing this as balance. I'm seeing this as love, right? So yeah, on the bottom of the deck too, I just looked and it says companionship. So I'm seeing a really blessed love life or a really blessed family life or you are just going to be really blessed when it comes to companionship with other people. So I'm seeing blessed as in business partnerships, contracts, friendships, and love life, and even family life. That is something that's going to be really, really blessed in your life is community for you. Um, and I'm also seeing underneath that was power. So you're going to be having a sense of authority, power. You are able, again, to not really see this as like manipulation as bad, but you have a power of authority over other people. You're able to... Um, gain a sense of recognition, power, or fame with this energy if you wanted to, but I'm seeing this as people look up to you. Wow, pile three. I looked underneath that and we got fortune. And there's a lot of sun imagery too. I don't know if you're seeing this here. Not all of my cards have sun imagery on it, but we're getting it so many times for you. So I'm seeing this as, you know, spotlight. When you think of the sun, when you think of Leo energy, this is all about being noticed, being recognized, being able to be kind of showy and flashy, uh, theatrical, if you will. I feel like whatever this power is that you have when it comes to people, when it comes to, you know, bringing balance, being able to, you know, articulate yourself with others, being able to connect with others, you can use this as a way to bring fortune into your life. You can use this as a way to um, bring a change into your lifestyle and also um, there's something about how you can benefit not just you but your family like I'm seeing this as like a legacy for you you have some sort of talent gift or ability that could bring a sense of power power authority and legacy in your life and I'm sorry I'm stuttering so much um, I drink a lot of coffee so I'm kind of just like da, 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 da. Um, let's see what it is that you have about you that can bring this fortune South node in the eighth house. Your south node is again your past life gifts and what comes easy to you. The eighth house can talk about the occult. The eighth house can talk about, you know, intimacy, right? Connecting with others. This can also talk about, you know, sexual intimacy as well. Um, fears, the hidden, mysteries of life. So also investments too. So you may be really good at being able to invest your money. I am seeing this for you. So like this could be like real estate crypto stocks this could be seen as a you know sorry to say this but this could be seen as sex work um this could also be seen as you know the occult this could be seen as divination spirituality anything that's seen as a little bit taboo or even intimacy as in you know counseling psychology um getting to know people being intimate with people i mean take take for whatever you know resonates for you this could be seen as so many different things um, just to clarify one more time with that eighth house, I'm going to use my cards just to kind of pinpoint what this could be. Um, oops. Windfall and hiding and concealing. So you're going to be getting some sort of windfall or recognition or something will be coming easy to you because of a talent, gift, or whatever this is that you're hiding or concealing. So I feel like you know what this is. I can't really get into too much detail about it. It could be a dream of yours that you have. Um, but I'm seeing this as a long-term investment that could be bringing you fortune basically for the rest of your life as well as the ones that you have close to you if that's something that you want to do as well. But pile three, that is all that I have for you. I really hope that this was helpful and I will see all of you guys next time. Bye.